Welcome to the F3 Podcast, where we discuss all things that pertain to faith, family, and finances. We are your host today. I'm Dr. Lionel M. Blair Sr., and I'm sitting next to my glorious wife, the radiant, the honorable, mm-hmm. her eminence, herself. She's the sainted mother, <laughs> St. Jasmine the First, Dr. Dr. Jasmine Blair. And remember, y'all. While I'm introducing my lovely wife, just remember, no subject, no, no subject is off limits. We will talk about what your pastor is scared to talk about because he's scared to lose you as a member. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they scared that, 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 that we, we, we will talk about stuff that your pastor is scared to talk about because he's scared to lose you as a member. He's scared of losing, losing your ties, offering, and everything else, you know. You already know if you've been rocking with us now for the past year or two. You already know how we get down over here at the F3 podcast. Glory to God. <laughs> you already know how we get down over here. All right. So, and t- today is just one of those shows. Yes, indeed. Listen, welcome, 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 y'all. No subject is off limits. And remember, no subject. Some people, I can't believe they said it. we we warned you. We on the circuit scene. We've been warning y'all. No subject is off limits. That's that's every subject. Every subject. Every subject pertaining to life and godliness and ungodly. No subject and <laughs> money and all that. No subject is off limits. I y'all. might cuss biblically. No subject is off limits. <laughs> we are having candid conversations about faith, family, and finance. So. You know, if it's not the episode for you, you you might just want to scroll past it. It's all right. We still love you. But it's all right. there are people that have reached out to us about how blessed they are, how much this platform ministers to them. People that won't even go to church or ain't been to church in a minute are, are loving this because they find something that they can identify with. So, you know, it's it's for who it's for. But listen, we're going to get into something that something else that needs to be talked about. Because this, to me, is the reason why some people don't want to go to church. All right? We are going to talk about toxic uh, uh, Black culture church and the effects that it has had on many people. Now, for context, I, I didn't grow up in church. So a lot of the things that I see... And I just kind of cringe at like, um, I didn't have to experience those things. However, a lot of people have. So it's definitely something to talk about, to look at, you know, where we are, how we got there as a body of Christ and why it is a complete turnoff to a lot of people, especially in my generation and after. So give us a simple definition. If you could just summarize your own words, what, what are we referring to when we say toxic black church culture? just the overall how we do things in the black church you know um now i love my caucasian brothers and sisters right and in, in the predominantly caucasian churches they have their own fair share of problems but not like us mm-hmm. okay we have we have we have a lot of issues y'all um and, and I think our issues really because we are descendants of slaves that had a colonized version of the faith. And we just knew what we knew. Mm. And we just winged it until we found God. You know, but finding God still does not excuse the lack of education. You know, a lot of our old, old preachers, they they knew how to hoop very well, but they were ignorant. And then you came into ones who who went to seminary. And you got to question the seminaries because seminaries don't really, you know, you know, some of these seminaries just suck the life out of you, too. But the point is, when it comes to toxic black church culture, and I've been in the black, most the predominantly black church uh, a, a large portion of my life and um, a lot of my ex- my bad experiences in life have come from black church mm. because we are people don't know how we don't know how to act we don't know how to act <laughs> number one we don't know how to act look how many generations of people 
that have had to survive toxic black church culture. They had to stand up in the front and do the walk of shame because they got pregnant or something like that. Yeah. You know, we have talked about people because of their outfit, you know, because of their hair, you know, because either the women didn't wear a skirt or, you know, the men won't in a suit. We, we have created a form of spiritual slavery, in my opinion, worse than what the slave masters passed on to a lot of ancestors. I see it like this. A lot of a lot of predominantly black churches are nothing more than modern day spiritual plantations. Mm. Because Woo! Woo! it's designed to keep you in line. Exactly. It's designed to keep you in line. That's what they do. So, so this is why most black churches they don't teach economic empowerment. They don't teach. They don't teach about health and wellness. They don't teach about mental health. You you know anything like that? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, now they they might get you filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, unless they Baptist or Methodist or you know whatever. Um, but that's about it. It's about coming to church, hearing the pastor preach. You know, living your life by the dictates and the rules of the church. And then going home, mm. you know, there's 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 nothing else outside of that. And really, honestly, the black church came out of a lot of old school holiness roots, mm -hmm. and you know them, you know, um, you know they they'll buck shout and dance, but the women can't do nothing. Mm. You know, the women the women are oppressed. You have to dress a certain way. You know, uh, the men can wear what they want, but the women can't wear the, the women can't wear pants. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, um, uh, everybody's going to hell for something. And then you can't even be honest with nobody, or your business gets spread around but along all the messy mothers. Yeah, it's a bunch of fear mongering. You know, it's a bunch of fear mongering. You know, uh, are going on in the church. You know, and then you know it, it, it just evolved into more versions of bondage. Mm. It just evolved into more versions of bondage. Think about it. You know, and a lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. A lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. You can identify with what we saying. You are hearing the same old message? Yeah. I mean, we we preach y'all preach the same things all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 nothing really about your life changed. You still you, you still work like a dog for pennies, mm. you know, um, all that kind of stuff, you know. And 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 we gotta admit we got a problem. Mm -hmm. We gotta admit we got a problem, you know, because our churches, you know, unless you unless you just kind of just get that breakthrough, most of our churches are small. You know, and there's nothing wrong with a small church. Nothing wrong with it at all. But most of our churches are small compared to our, to our predominantly Caucasian brothers and sisters. Okay, because we are very harsh in our approach to ministry. Mm -hmm. Black people have a harshness about them. You know, I always say our Caucasian brothers and sisters were too soft. And our black and, and, and our black church culture is too hard. We don't have we don't there's not enough restorative, redemptive um approaches to people's life and issues. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is just harsh. You know, I used to be like that. I'm I listen, the black church will make you like that. Yes, it will. They will make you like that. They will make you hard. It will make you rigid. Mm -hmm. It'll make you nasty to people. Okay. And, and, and I used to be like that, y'all. I used to be like that. And, and, and I wonder why people didn't, you know, I mean, what I said was the truth, but I said it in the wrong spirit. Yeah. And then I wondered why people didn't like me. I mean, not that I cared, but I still wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, you know, I begin to see why. You know, black church, we, we we got some problems. Yeah, we do. We got some problems because we, we to me, it reminds me of the Pharisee because you put all the emphasis on the external 
and how things look, but the quality of people's soul, you don't really care about like that. As long mm. as they pay them tithes in their offering, and as long as they, and I, I, and I, and I noticed too, we cannot accept anything outside of our culture. That it's another form of racism. It really is. Mm. It really is because black people, for some reason, think that they can't be racist or racially biased. You know, I heard somebody say we, we, you know, black people don't have the, I guess, the power or the social status to be racist. But if you don't like somebody simply because they are non-black or brown, that's racist, and that's wrong. Yeah, you know, so 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 you know, I, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I've I've heard people say, you know, y'all sing all them white songs. We don't love no worship song to somebody put a little soul in it, as they call it. Yeah. I mean, that's a good song, I like the lyrics, but it needs some soul. We we gotta blacken it up a little bit. Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. I, it's a song. Can can you learn to appreciate someone else's diversity? That's what I'm saying. You, you see, and one thing I noticed, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. I didn't start growing. In my walk with God and my understanding like that until I started getting around the charismatics, until I started dealing with white people a little mm -hmm. bit more, you know, then God began to balance me out. Now, be, now, of course, the apostolic side of me, I saw some things that was off about them, too. Mm -hmm. But that ain't what God wanted me to focus on. Then there. Right. He said, focus on the balance that I'm trying to bring to you. And see, this is why I can preach in a black. Uh, I can preach in. A black church and a white church. I've preached in both. <laughs> I have. I've preached in both. You've got to be versatile. You see what I'm saying? And see, this is why, you know, you know. Um, God don't want to black everything. No. And he don't want to white everything either. No, he don't. <laughs> Can we have a middle ground, please? A middle ground. You know, because, you know, God made everybody. He made black, white. He made everybody. Okay. So, 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 yeah, you, you know, you, you, oh, no, I'm not gonna say that, but <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I'm about to say something, I'm not, but but the point is, is that God made everybody, you understand what I'm saying, and He's not more in love with black folks than white folks, mm. okay? Because at the end of the day, God sees His kingdom as, as He said, My house should be called a house of prayer for all. Oh. All nations, not just black people and not just white people. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. So, so because black people, our, our, our identity was stolen. Okay. And we were stolen. Well, we were sold. I'm going to put it that way. Because some most, of us weren't stolen. We were sold. Yeah. We were sold by our own kind. You know, the same roots y'all try to go back to, the same roots that betrayed us. But anyway. Um, so we've always searched for identity. So when we found a little expression, we get extreme with it. Mm -hmm. We get extreme with it, you know, and then, and then we demonize anything else that is not, you know, um, listen, I've been in churches where they buck shout and dance and river dance and stuff. And then I've been in white churches where they roll on the floor. Whoa, whoa. And they shake and they shake under the power of God. You know, I've been in, you know, when they do holy laughter and stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? You got to diversify. You got to diversify your experience. You know, hmm. and that's the problem with black leaders. We just so for blackness, you know. And then, you know, there's this term too that a lot of black leaders use, I don't like too, called whiteness. In other words, in it's other words, crazy. they demonize being white, you know, and 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 I'm just like you. You you can never get me to hate white people because white people stood the white people stood with us during during you know the civil rights and stuff like that. We don't we we don't highlight that. Mm -hmm. But you know, black church culture, um, we're still dealing with the traumatic effects of slavery. We're still dealing with that. And, um, you know, we need to get to a place where we are healed from from the trauma that was done to our race. So that way we can see clearly what God is doing in the world, you know, um, 
and and uh you know because the slave masters was harsh on us mm -mm. that's all we know how to be is harsh towards each other that's all we know how to be and 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 black churches are some of the most controlling churches you'll ever sit under okay mm, say that again they're some of the most controlling churches you will ever sit under they got more rules than god got mm. come on now it's the black churches that got the most rules the most rules come on now even even legally you look at their bylaws they got the most rules or the most extreme ones you understand you know i, I used to wonder why you know okay like very very rarely you see a black man or black woman that rise up with great signs and wonders most of the people that we have seen on the scene that flow in great power signs and wonders have been caucasian people or people um that are not black and i'm like why is this you notice even in the charismatic move and they got some off stuff about them but see they got they, they got them special miracles man mm -hmm. i'm talking about glass eyes turning into real eye you know, you see what I'm Come saying? On. Body parts growing back in people's bodies. Teeth growing back. Teeth growing mouth. back. I mean, amputated breasts growing back. Powerful uh, miracles. Powerful I'm, ta miracles. I'm talking about, you know, and, and, and you don't see a lot of black people moving in that kind of power. And I begin to wonder why. But see, you know, Caucasian people are more grace oriented. Yes, they are. Even if some of them are ap highly apostolic and governmental, they are not. They're not oppressive like black churches and black leaders can be. And the reason, listen, listen. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. Y'all need to embrace another side. I ain't saying that you can't be governmental. You know, I'm not saying that you cannot exercise the authority God has given you, but you know, white leaders or, you know, I've even seen it with some Spanish leaders who move in great power. They exercise a level of grace. Okay. A level of grace, a level yes, of they mercy. Do. They, 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 they have meekness. Yes, okay? they do. Meekness. See, black, folk, black churches, a lot of times, they're not meek. They're very mm -hmm. harsh. And what is meekness? Meekness means to be gentle. It means to have um, control over your strength. OK, so 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 because a lot of black churches are not meek, they're not meek when it comes to your shortcomings, they're not meek when it comes to your struggles. Mm -hmm. We're not used to meek. So when a pastor comes or a leader comes as meek, we'll take that the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're so used to being rebuked and embarrassed. That comes. You know what? That, We're so used to being rebuked and embarrassed. That's, but see, yeah. that's that's what Massa did to us. You see, you see the pattern? You see the pattern? See, this is what I'm saying. I, I would dare say, in order to be delivered, you fully, you got to be delivered from your blackness. Come on. That's connected to slavery. Mm-hmm. Because see, y'all get mad, y'all get mad at at black people who don't speak like y'all but see it could be that we're free from what y'all inherited through slavery mm. come on and the language is different okay just maybe examine the black church culture examine our music examine our style of preaching for crying out loud examine how every uh notable event is a is a fashion show and a pageant <laughs> we, right. we can't just come or oh, I got to find something. And again, if you like fashion, there's nothing against yeah. that. Enjoy it. Celebrate yourself. Yeah, we but like fashion. it shouldn't be a who's who every time something happens. You know, and, and you and, if, when you yeah. feel like you can't go to the house of God because well, I don't have nothing to wear or I wore that last year, somebody's missing the mark. I don't you have see, no church clothes. You you see what I'm saying? Somebody's missing the mark. We're yeah. we're missing the actual transformation that's supposed to take place we really are and a lot of people just are not impressed as we continue to talk about this pivot you know we're still in this phase where we're going to see a lot of people 
uh, not coming back to traditional black church culture because it has abused them. They've seen it work their parents and grandparents like a dog. Mm -hmm. They've seen people rebuked and embarrassed and called out that probably needed some counseling, healing, and deliverance. We're just over the theatrics. It's always some drama. Somebody always having to a, a, a apologize for something. People are ready to fight. You know, there are people have given testimonies. They have gotten into fights. Their family members got other pastors have showed up and, uh, you know, Try some things, yeah. you know, it's it's crazy when you have to deal. But see, we've got to deal with the nature in us that that I think a lot of people and this isn't everybody. But another aspect that makes black church toxic and cult and culture is you have a lot of people that want to be saved thugs. You know, I, I want to prove I'm I'm from the streets. OK, but if you've gone through a transformation, you cannot handle people the way you handle people on the block. There's got to be some kind of love and mercy there. If yeah. your default reaction is the way that you were in thug life, you you're not transformed enough. That mind needs some more renovation. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to have pastors now stop behaving this way and really be beneficial because it's just turning people off. Any closing remarks you got for this episode? <sighs> I will say this, you know, um, you got to examine why you believe what you believe. Examine why you do. Why do you hoop? Riddle me that, Batman. Why? What, what, where did that come from? Because, see, the slave used to communicate by music. They used to communicate by music so that way Massa couldn't hear what they were saying. See, 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 so so that Massa wouldn't understand what they were saying. They used to sing a song, let's go down by the river. That means let's go pray. You know, stuff, stuff like that. So we've added a lot of the stuff that we've added, you know, to our culture has come from a culture that held us in bondage. And I'm not saying, you know, hooping is neither good or bad. I'm just saying, why do you do it? And then when you limit yourself just to one cultural expression. Right. Hear me, y'all. When you just limit yourself to one cultural expression, you limit how God can use you. But some of you are satisfied with how God can use you because that's all you know. So when it comes to uh, church culture, you know, a lot, of, a lot of what the slave masters did to us, that's what we do to our own people. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm saying we going we, we need a reformation. Y'all talking about revival? Ain't no revival coming. Reformation is coming. Mm -hmm. God gonna still move by His power and by His might, but reformation, I believe, is what's coming to many in the Black Church. Absolutely. Listen, we want to thank you guys for joining this episode of the F3 podcast. Tell us down in the comments what you think. Are you tired of toxic black church culture? Are you one that's trying to be a solution and kind of help us change the perspective and make it better than what it has been? Let us know in the comments what you think. Follow us over on IG at King and Queen Blair. And until next time on the F3 podcast, goodbye.